are you? I am Jello Biafra, and you're not. Jello, who'd you have beside you? I have uh, Roger Taylor of Queen. Yes, but I would like to be known as Ron in the Box. AKA King Buzzo of the. But today I want to be Ron in the Box. <laughs> also known as King Buzzo of the Jelvins. Well, yeah, yeah. Buzz, what is your name in the Jelvins, in Jello with the Melvins? What is your name? I can't remember. We, we rotate them around. I think I made him Kim Jong Buzzo the last time, and he was... Uh, I was happy about it. Well, he, I think he was Jean Benet Milosevic on the first album. I figure everybody already knows who we are, so we might as well keep rotating the names. Hey, so. whoa, whoa, whoa. You bitches are doing an interview with Nardwar and he didn't tell me? <laughs> and who are you? He, he said not to tell you. <sighs> it's, because I, it's because I told him he looked like Naughty Holder. And who uh, are you? Uh, 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 who the hell are you? I and you are Dale. I am Dale. I'm, he's I'm, Bill I'm, Dale. He's, he's Billy Ray Cyrus of Altamont. <laughs> also playing with the Jelvins. Also yeah. playing with the Jelvins. So it's really exciting. I hear you guys are covering Wesley Willis. Boy, Who news travels that? fast, doesn't it? Yeah, Don't tell anybody. Well, because because Wesley did so many used so many of the same keyboard programs for different songs, we're gonna play an entire set of Wesley songs, but never have to learn more than one song, except for me, where I uh, I know enough of those Wesley lyrics. It's like remembering all the Cheech and Chong dialogue when I was in middle school. Dave's or not something. here, man. <laughs> Dave's what do you think here, about man. playing Wesley Willis? I'm into it. What I'm Wesley Willis into. songs are you guys doing? We're doing Rock and Roll McDonald's. Was that hard to learn, Buzz? Uh, it has its perks. Because it's pretty hard to cover Wesley Willis cello. Well, I, I've been trying to gain to uh, rise to the occasion, but uh, Check it I out. have a ways to go. Check it out. See, things are good in America. See? <laughs> We're eating good down here. Buzz, uh, cello uh, apparently has been taking off his shirt. Yeah, yeah. It's like staring into the sun. <laughs> when was the last time you took off your shirt, Jello by Afford? This hasn't happened a lot, has it? Um, I actually took it off today before I put this one on, in the privacy of where I'm staying, of course. But how about on stage? Have you seen Jello without his shirt, Dale, when you're back behind the drums? I have, and he's threatened to do a nude, nude show. Nude show. I a dread nude the nude show. I dread the day. A new Jello Biafra show? Oh, there's been a few of those. None of them were planned, but uh, hey, how, many the only... how many of them were spoken word shows? <laughs> <laughs> None a new, yet. A but... new spoken word show. That's the one. How oh, do you get internet. all this the stuff? Internet. There's this thing the called... internet. There's the this internet. thing, Jello, that you don't know about called the internet. Oh, yeah. uh, I know why you don't like it, because Al Gore. Al Gore invented, invented it. Right. <laughs> Al Gore yeah, invented that, the that, internet. Yeah, that, that is a that is a major turnoff. <laughs> Although a bigger one is all these people who treat it as a little small town gossip spy network, or I feel like I'm living in one big panopticon in cyberspace, and I don't even have a computer. People know all these things about me, but you know, some of them are actually true. Some of them aren't, though. Jello, you were dressed up. What do Buzz and Dale dress up as? Um, Creeps. you'll have to see. Creeps. Because <laughs> you're wearing skirts? I've seen some skirts on Long stage. Skirts. Actually, we like to call them moo-moos. Not me, I can't drum in a dress. Who else is in the Jelvins? There's one other gentleman in the Jelvins, isn't there? Or two other gentlemen. One, one, one other one tonight. His name is Sir David Scott Stone, and he's a freak from Los Angeles. You also we, were... We've occasionally had Adam Jones as well, who's... Another freak uh, from Los Angeles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> from right. Tool. Yeah, Tool, right. yeah. Yeah, right now he's tooling for a new album with his other fellow freaks from Los Angeles in that main project of his. Last night, Jello, did you shoot some mayonnaise into the audience? Uh, it was actually was? mayonnaise mixed with cheese, made in Japan. A woman from the... Uh, Oh, Iron Composer series gave me that because uh, she couldn't get me crack brand crackers on my birthday. So uh, she gave me that, but I don't really like mayonnaise, so I decided to uh, squirt it all over everybody. How did the audience take to that buzz? I didn't even notice. Did you notice anything, Dale? I noticed there was one kid that just stood there with a big splotch of it at his face. <laughs> Pretty funny. The whole show? The whole show? It was the whole show. <laughs> It's not going to hurt you. Don't panic. It's organic. Jello by Afro in the Jelvins. You, that's a great slogan. That's right. I don't, don't think panic, it's even it's true with that stuff. It was too weird a color to be organic. Well, don't panic. It's inorganic. <laughs> Jello by Afro in the Jelvins. You guys have a song called Yuppie. 
Uh, yeah, Yuppie Cadillac. Yuppie Cadillac. Now, is it true, Jello, years ago that you somehow wangled a free budget rent-a-car in a dead Kennedy, speaking of Cadillacs? That was before a commercial sponsorship smelled as bad as it did today with Blitzkrieg oh, Bop and wow. Iggy Songz and all the The truth ads. comes out. Uh -huh. Basically, budget rent-a-car in England, in England only, offered to... Uh, give us some free rent-a-car if we'd plug them somehow. So there was a Dead Kennedy song about called The Prey from about a, a mugging of a tourist from the mugger's point of view. So in the lyric sheet, after the guy reached for his keys right before he got jumped, we put the budget rent-a-car keys, and sure enough, we got the car. Or I got the car later when I was over there on my... Uh, honeymoon way back when I was actually married and the but the downside of it was I had to drive in London on the left side of the road where they drive really really fast and uh, I kept turning into the wrong lanes and uh, as Wesley would put it it was a hail ride Jello Biafra, here you are in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada singing with the Jelvins. Can I call the band the Jelvins, Buzz and Dale? That's up to them. A lot of other people have. <laughs> Fine with me. What do you think about alternate singers for the Jelvins? Because you, Buzz, and you, Dale, almost made me an alternate singer for the yeah, Jelvins. We, we, we didn't almost make you. You were. <laughs> you put me on the spot. What happened, Jello? You were supposed to show up at an in-store at Electric Heavyland in Seattle. You didn't show up, so what happened? So you were there, and it took us 20 minutes to talk you into doing it. While we stood on stage waiting. I had to do the song, I Am the Owl. Oh, that would have been worth seeing. Well, I should have got up a little earlier. Well, actually, I didn't do it because I was frightened and I didn't know any of the lyrics, so I just got everybody to jump up and down. Well, the, not knowing any job. of the words hasn't stopped any of the scab hoes who sing in the fake Dead Kennedys, now has it. They never learned the words either. <laughs> Ba-boom! <laughs> What does that mean? I don't know. That was just like a punchline, yeah, an like, exclamation that's like, mark. That's like, booyah! <laughs> With the Jelvins, you guys have played many interesting locations, like that in-store at Electric Heavy Land. Well, Jello, we didn't make it there. But did you play a church in Philadelphia? A church? We did, yeah. I can't quite figure it out. There were literally kids smoking pot in the church. <laughs> now, how DIY was the church? Was it like a corporate sort of place, or was it a really an underground church? Uh, it was less DIY than we thought. Actually, they had their shit together. It was okay. It was fun. It was good. There was no cross in the it church, was, though. It was a Unitarian church, which is a more activist uh, branch that, it, that should never be associated with a religious right. I'd done shows in the upstairs where the actual church is before, with everybody sitting in the pews for my, one of my spoken word shows, where I actually got to play They Threw Me Out of Church by Wesley Willis over a church PA in a church before I went on. But the punk shows, which the uh, Unitarian people feel is community outreach for uh, kids on the street and all that, um, they go on in the basement. However, the basement... Lots of stuff goes on in the basement. <laughs> however, the basement was not very well ventilated, to put it mildly, so it was kind of like playing in hell. Buzz, with the Melvins, do you always have the same members in the Melvins? Don't you sometimes trick the crowd into thinking that security guards are in the Melvins? Could you explain we have, we that? Have, we have done that in the past, yes. One time we were playing with Tool in Portland, Oregon. Uh, uh, we dressed up our bass player in a security guard's outfit and sent him out about 20 minutes before we played into the, into the, uh, the, the I don't know what it would be, the orchestra pit, pit the orchestra pit, but it's behind the barrier. He was out there yelling at people and screaming, and then we went on stage like half an hour later, and uh, I said, our bass player's sick. Does anybody know how to play bass? And he raises his hand, and we brought him on stage, and we played the show. And it was really funny, on the internet, some kids said, yeah, their bass player was sick, and the security guard play and he played, and he did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the drummer yelled at him, don't quit your day job. They're really mean to that guy. <laughs> he did a good job. Yeah, he did it great. was weird. What are they complaining about? Buzz and Dale, you guys have been rocking out for a long time. You're originally from Aberdeen, Washington. Now, yeah. from Aberdeen, we got the Far Melvins, from. Metal Church, Nirvana, the drummer from Pansy Division, oh sorry, the bass player from Pansy Division, Chris Freeman. Who I else is that. from Aberdeen? He's from Aberdeen? Yes, he is. Chris Freeman from Pansy Division is from Aberdeen. I think you once told me, is there like a Doobie Brother from there Aberdeen? Is there is yeah. a Doobie Brother from Aberdeen. I can't remember which one it is. So Kurt Cobain, They're the Melvins, bad. Metal Church, all from Aberdeen with the Doobie Brother. Yeah, that's true. What do you want me to, I, I, I have no excuse. Well, it kind of all comes around tonight because tonight you guys are playing with... Dwa. DOA and Annie Kidd. And 
Is it true one of the first punk gigs you brought Kurt Cobain to see was DOA, Buzz? No, the first punk gig he saw was Black Flag. Oh, I thought it was DOA. Canadian no. connection. No, 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 Black Flag. Do you ever remember from DOA back in the day? Because like you're playing with DOA tonight as the Jelvins. You remember DOA in Aberdeen or anything like that? Any early punk oh, gigs? Oh, yeah, I saw DOA. My well, very was... first gig with the Melvins was with DOA. Opening, opening for DOA. And where was that, and what do you remember about it, and how is it going to compare to tonight? It was at the Tropicana, and I don't remember much about it at all because I was stone, wasted stone out of my mind. I do remember DOA playing, live to party, <laughs> live to party. I think that was let's wreck the oh, party, that's what wasn't it? Is. it? Well, I think know, it was live to party. Back then it was live to party, <laughs> live to to party. But it has stuck in your mind for like 20 odd years, so that's a really successful tune then. 21 years. Yeah, but so is a lot of commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Jello, what have Buzz and Dale taught you? What have they taught me? Like, what have you learned? <laughs> <laughs> Among other things, never to do interviews with them, especially if you're in the room. <laughs> well, what do you mean? And what have you learned from Jello Biafra? Let's think. That uh, it's okay to wear clothes that make make it to where everybody has to wear sunglasses to look at you. <laughs> Hi yo, <laughs> booyah! <laughs> but uh, now I now remember what I learned from the Melvins. You may be tired of hearing me retell this story you told me, but I have to tell it again anyway. No, um, there, there's a, <laughs> eventually I think researcher V Search is going to put out a volume two of that book, Pranks. And one of the things that has to go in is the one they told me about a farm kid in the Aberdeen area. Um, brought a stillborn calf into town and left it in a women's bathroom stall in McDonald's. In the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> How is that for prank? Of course, one cop car screeches to a halt, then another, then another, everybody watches. That's, not, that's good. as good as Paul Mavridi's of Anarchy Comics, which is in the last prank's book, taking a big old motorcycle lock and padlocking the doors shut at an evangelist gathering in Arkansas and locking everyone inside. Jello Biafra and Dale and Buzz of the Jelvins, you guys have a new song called Those Dumb Punk Kids. We'll buy anything. And it mentions the band The Miss... Fart Fits? The Misfits in it. Uh, now, guess what? We found out recently <laughs> that Glenn Danzig has been mad at us for years because we stole one of his t-shirt designs that he stole from somebody else. <laughs> so, so, so it's, somebody, somebody ripped, ripped off the stuff that I ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the first time. The Misfits skull is from an old movie. That's what I mean. That's, remember, that's what I'm talking about. I remember about. They, they were running around claiming they were going to beat the crap out of me back in the day because they said I stole Halloween from them. They invented Halloween. <laughs> yeah, Susie and the Banshee song didn't, and the Half Japanese song didn't. No, no, and the, no, no, they the, didn't. No. The Carpenter films didn't. But I did. It was you just, did it. it they it, it, it invented was, it. it. It was kind of, it was kind of, kind of scary because I have seen some real violence surrounding that that group of people. Well, so. them big steroid pumped up prison looking guys. Have you played with them at all? No. Have the Me? No, Melvins and Danzig ever mixed it up? No, 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 no. Not about the, the misfits. Del, no, nothing. Nope. We got to do one more question, then we got to run. Winding up here, Buzz and Dale, just lastly, a little Melvin's tidbit. I think it's amazing. The Melvin's, one of the heaviest bands in the world. Right, Jello? Well, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> you played a gig with Shadowy Men on a Shadowy Planet, one of the hundreds. lightest bands. I love that. Shadowy Men versus the Melvin's. Well, it was, it was, it was more of a teaming of sorts. That was out, outdoors in Olympia, Olympia, Washington. How did you know about that? It was part of the International Pop Underground in there? 1991. Were you there? No, I no, wasn't there. No, I you, wasn't there. What were you doing? I was in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Doing what? I was recovering from the Fugazi gig I organized a week before where I had to buy $800 worth Don't of portable toilets. Now. They wouldn't let you cross the border, would they? No, they let me cross the border, no problem. With 800 toilets? No, I had to spend $800 on portable toilets for the gig to happen. Because oh, the cops said he had toilet. me by the balls. And if I didn't buy those $800 worth of portable toilets, the gig wouldn't go on. And I bought the toilets, but then nobody used them. You, used them. you bought them or you rented them? Well, for that amount of money, you should have been the owner of them, and then you could sell them off to somebody else. 
Actually, too bad eBay wasn't around back then. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Lot. Yeah, I think those portable toilets are going for a lot on eBay now. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jelvin... Ian McKay sat here. Ian McKay shat here. <laughs> Lighting up here, oh, yeah. Jelvin. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, in all seriousness, Buzz, Jello Biafra here. What can you tell the people last year about Jello Biafra, the PRMC? I mean, this is serious. Jello yeah. versus the PRMC. Yeah. Where would NWA be without it? Really? Yeah, totally. In they, wouldn't way. Able, they wouldn't have been able to sell a single record. If it wasn't for Jello getting under pressured from exactly. the PRMC? Setting a precedent, may, making it possible. I guess what I mean by that is what have you learned from working with Jello by Afro? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a blast. It's good. What have I learned from working with me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. Be, be, because I'm a composer but a non-musician of sorts, it's like well, it's great when these songs that have been in my head for a long time, to hear them actually played and actually come out really good. I mean, that's, that's one of the best feelings I ever have. And then they came out pretty good. I think both the albums we did, Never Breathe What You Can't See, and then the newer one, Sig Howdy, I, I can actually crank them at home and enjoy them even though I'm on. On them. <laughs> and they're longer songs too, Jello. They're longer than some of the songs that maybe Jello fans are used to, I guess, except for your spoken word, eh? <laughs> well, they, I, I mean, people who listen <laughs> to <laughs> Time to Melt or Full Metal Jack Off over and over again are going to be disappointed at how short these are. But, uh, but CDs are longer. You know, you can get more on it. <laughs> Hi, oh. Booyah! <laughs> Last question. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? Why should people care about Jello and the Melvins and Sieg Howdy? Why not? Because it's good. All right, well, thanks so much, Jelvins. Keep on rocking in the free world and do 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 do. Quack, quack. Booyah! Booyah! Hi, oh! <laughs> <laughs>